Shalom and welcome everyone. In his upcoming lecture, Dr. Levy will speak about the musical instruments clay zemer in the Tanakh. Dr. Levy will systematically look at the names of musical instruments and where they appear throughout the Tanakh. Dr. Levy will consider the role of music and its teleological varieties. For example, as an expression of spiritual joy, spiritual lament in the form of the dirge of Echa, and its role taking a Navi to an ecstatic state of ecstasy in preparation for prophecy, and of course, the role of music therapeutically, for instance, when David is called upon to play the kinor to cure King Saul of a Ruach Ra. We hope you enjoy the lecture. Thank you so much, Rabbi Weisblum, for the chance to offer this lecture on musical instruments in the Tanakh, and to Alita for that wonderful introduction again. Um, tonight we will be looking at not only the names of musical instruments, but systematically going through the 24 sections of the Tanakh and looking at where music plays a role, either as spiritual expression of joy, or in the other extreme, lament, and two, uh, for Nevi'im, for the prophets, to be taken to a state of ecstasy that prepares them to go into Nevoah, and three, the therapeutic aspect of music that is so wonderfully crystallized in David Melech, who is brought before Shaul to play the harp uh, to cure him of a ruach ra of melancholy. So let's get on with um, the lecture. Um, today, uh, cognate Sem uh, Semitic languages offer us some insights uh, about the names of instruments. So, for instance, um, the Akkadian word halalu is a reed pipe, which sounds a lot like the Khalil or flute. Uh, the Sumerian Quran is a straight trumpet, uh, the Hebrew Karen, and the Roman Karnu or Karno and Cornet. Um, the Coptic word nabla is related to the word nevel, uh, which is the shape of a pitcher or leather bottle, and is a kind of harp perhaps more simple than the kinor, as in the phrase ben nevalim al alamot, um, alama is a maiden, a young lady, um, so it was thought to have a, maybe a higher pitch than, let's say, the kinor. Um, and usually it's in association with the kinor, so you'll find the phrase nevalim al alamot ve bekinorot al hashemenit. Hashemenit uh, is an eight-stringed instrument. Now Josephus, uh, second temple um, uh, historian, writes the kinra had ten strings, and as struck with a small stick, the nabla had twelve notes and was played with the fingers. The cymbals were of brass and large and broad. Nabla and Kinor were fashioned from electrum, and then Pliny the Elder says that electrum was a metal of amber color consisting of four parts of gold and one of silver. So um, at this point I'd like to take a look at some of the names of musical instruments in the Tanakh. Of course um, uh, one psalm, the last psalm 150, uh, notes some of them. So let's read that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, el bekadcho, hallelujah, bekrekia uzo, hallelujah, begivrotav, hallelujah, kekrov, good low, hallelujah, betokea shofar. So there we have the first instrument. A shofar um, in very distant antiquity was used to summon to war, to assemble a congregation, and to break up camp. Uh, much more could be said about the shofar. On the Amim Noreim, Maimonides notes that it causes us to wake up from our spiritual slumbers and that it is a, a wake-up call. Um, but the, the shofar had many purposes, one of which was to break up camp, one was to call an assembly together, and one was uh, to summon to war, and many other functions as well. Uh, they found in archaeological evidence the Bikol Rosh Hodesh Tekuah shofar that was actually... Uh, 
in the Beit HaMikdash that the shofar or the trumpets would be sounded uh, to announce the arrival of a Rosh Hodesh. Um, now, we have the Kinor. The Kinor is usually translated harp. David Melech plays the harp. Uh, the Nevel is also a stringed instrument. Uh, as I mentioned, it might have a higher pitch than the Kinor, but it's like a harp. The Halil is a flute. The Chatzor Tzara is a trumpet. The Tuf is a tambourine. As in the classic um, instance in Shir Arayam, where it says, Vatikach Miriam, so Miriam is doing a refrain. She's saying, echoing what her brother Moshe had said 21 verses before, sing to Hashem, he's trying gloriously, horse and rider he's thrown in the sink. See, so the tough is a tambourine. In the later historical period, when Ladino Spanish in Hebrew letters was prominent, uh, a tuff could even mean a tam- uh, castanet. Now, what's another instrument? The cymbal, metzul taim, and uh, then we have the small tinkling bells, the zeltzalem lim, and then we have a mana anaim, shaken bells, larger bells. And the shalish is a triangle. We still have that today in a symphony. Um, and then you have phrases, idiomatic expressions. Bechol atze biroshim. All manner of instruments of Cyprus. Some people speculate that could be a xylophone-like instrument. The shofar, there's special laws of how it was made. From a ram's horn, a karen is another type of horn. And machalat is either an instrument or a dance instrument. An instrument used for dancing. Um, there are other instruments we're not going to enumerate on all of them, such as the uh, Magre Fa, which is a second temple instrument. It's said in the Mishnah in uh, Tamid, I think, that one of the Leviim dropped or threw down the Magre Fa, which is perhaps shaped like a shovel, and anyway, it resounded and made an echoing effect that was heard in the Galil. Um, also, um, in the Beit HaMikdash, when the Keturah was burned, it says that Goats in the in the uh, in the north of Israel in the Galil um, would sneeze sometimes. Well, also the sound of this reverberating magre fa, this percussion instrument shaped like a shovel, also made its way and was perceived by people in the north, in in the Galil. Um, so I should mention we're going to now start. Um, you know, they say there's no before or after in the Tanakh, but we're going to begin systematically in Genesis with the first mention of a musical instrument. Um, so we find in Genesis uh, Dalad, a very sheet Dalad, um, and Chayan knew his wife and she conceived and bore Chanuk, and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Chanuk. And unto a Chanuk was born Arad, and Arad begot Mehudjael, and Mehudjael begot Methushael, and Methushael begot Lamech. And here we come up to the musical instrument. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other is Zillah. Um, and then this is the phrase. And Ada bore Jabal, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents and have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all such as handle the harp, Sethera, or lyre, and pipe. Ki uh, the shame Achiv Yuval, who haya avi kol tofesh kinor ve'ugav. So kinor and ugav is a harp and a pipe. Um, let's go on. In Genesis 31, 27, um, when Yaakov is trying to flee from his crooked father-in-law, Levan, uh, we read, Wherefore didst thou flee secretly and outwit me and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with myrrh, mirth and with songs, with tabret and with harp. So there, uh, Levan is evoking secular music that, oh, you shouldn't have run away from me, Yaakov. I would have sent you away with some musical accompaniment. Then, of course, as we mentioned before in um, uh, Exodus 15, 
ותיקח מרים הנביאה חוד ארון את הטף בידה ותצאנה כל הנשים אחר הקרב בתופים ובמקלות ותן להם מרים שיר לנו שם גיאון אז הוא זרק לו רמה וים So uh, Miriam uh, takes out the women with a tambourine in song and dances. Now, the shofar is sounded on Mount Sinai. So we look at uh, Shemot 19, and it came to pass on the third day when it was morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a horn exceedingly loud and all the people that were in the camp trembled. And when the voice of the shofar waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him, by a voice. Vayehi kol ha-shofar holech v'chazek ma'od Moshe yidaber v'ha-elokim ya'anenu b'kol. So um, one of the commentaries notes that the uh, usually one sees lightning and hears thunder, but it was a mixed metaphor uh, that one would uh, see the thunder and hear the lightning. That's a mix of senses there at the Revelation event on Har Sinai. Further, we have mentioned on the high priest's garment, there were bells, pa'amonim, singular pa'amon, um, and that occurs in Exodus 28. Um, we read, Vasita al shulav rimone techelet v'argaman v'tolat shani al shulav saviv upa'amane Zahav betocham saviv. So it goes on and says, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the skirts of the robe round about. Pa'amon zahav v'rimon, pa'amon zahav v'rimon. Al shulei ha'me'il saviv. Um, so uh, one of the reasons the high priest had uh, pomegranates and bells on his hem was that when he was walking in the Beit HaMikdash, people would know that the Kohen Gadol was approaching, even perhaps before you saw him, so that the bells would be heard before he could be seen. Now, Numbers 10, 1 through 10, has quite a bit about the trumpets, the Chatzarot, which blow an alarm at the Katem Teruah. And then also in Leviticus 23, you have the Yom Teruah of these trumpets. So it says, Ose lecha shetei chatzorot. Make for you two trumpets of silver. Kesef miksha. Vitase otam. Vehayu lecha mikra ha'eda ulemasa et ha machanot. Vatiku behem vinodu elecha kol ha'eda el petach ohel moed. ואם באחת יתקעו ונעודעו אליך ונשאים ראשי אלפי ישראל ותקעתם תרוע ונשאו המחנות החונים קדמה. And when you blow an alarm, the camps that lie on the east shall take their journey. ותקעתם תרוע שנית נשאו המחנות החונים תימנה. And when you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south shall set forward. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the assembly is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. So these are all signals for either breaking up camp or for assembling people. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for a statute forever, throughout your generations. And when you go to war in your land against an adversary that oppresses you, then ye shall sound an alarm with trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. You shall be delivered from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness and in your appointed seasons and in your new moons, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices 
of your peace offerings, and they shall be for you for a memorial before your God. I am Hashem your God. Uviyom simchatchem ubomodachem beroshe chadashi chechem betikatem bechatzorot al alotechem ve'al zevche shalomechem ve'hayu lachem lezikaron lifnei alotechem ani Hashem alotechem. So we see different functions of the trumpets there. To, to break up a camp, to assemble people, to go to war, and then also for the good times of Simchot, of Rosh, uh, Rosh Hodesh and the very Simchot. Um, Numbers 31, 6, instruments sent into battle to rally troops against the Midians. And Moses sent them, a thousand of every tribe, to war. Them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to war with the holy vessels and the trumpets for the alarm in his hand. Ve'yishlach otam Moshe elef lemate. Latzava otam et penchas ben Elazar Kohen Latzava the chile hakodesh chatzorot haterua biyado. So we're seeing that there's uh, these trumpets have great significance um, for all sorts of different functions. Now we find in Yeshua. Now we've left um, the Pentateuch, the Chumash. We're going into Yeshua six. Um, and we find the chef Shofrot Hayovalim. It mentions, And seven priests shall bear seven ram's horn before the ark, and the seven day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with Shiva Koanim Yisau Shiva Shofrot Hayovalim, Lifnei Haaron, Uviyom Ashvii, Tosabu, Et Hair Sheva Pamim, the Hakonim Tekou, but Shofrot. And it shall be that when they make the long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the horn, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall go flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. So this is the miracle of circling the city of Yericho seven times and blowing the trumpet seven times, and the walls fall down. Vaya be meshoch bekeren hayovel kishemachem et kol hashofar. Ve'yiru kol ha'am teru'a gedola ve'niflach chomot and the walls fell ha'ir of the city. Tacha tach techa ve'alu ha'am ish begado. Um, so now we're going to move into shofar mentioned in the book of Judges. Um, you'll recall that um, uh, Ehud, when he returned home after killing the king of Moab, Moab, he blew the horn in the mountain of Ephraim. And Devorah in Judges 5, uh, she and Barak, the son of Abinoam, on the day after Sisera was vanquished, Devorah says, I, even I will sing unto the Lord Hashem, I will sing praise to the Lord of Israel. Uh, Judges 6, the shofar again is used for warfare. Judges 7, Gideon defeats the Midianites. Um, and verse 20 notes, um, three companies below the, blow the shofarot, give impression of more than one man were in the attack. Remember, Gideon just had 300 men, but the, um, they defeated their enemies who thought they were in much greater mass and power. Judges 11.34 After Jephthah had smitten, smitten children of Ammon, and Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house, his daughter came out to meet him with two pimumachalot, timbrels and tambourines. Judges 34, the shofar again is used for warfare, as in Judges 8. Now, let's look at the Book of Kings. Music, you go into ecstasy for Nevoa. Now, um, this is the, we're looking at Shmuel, Aleph, and Bet first. And this is really the high point of uh, music in ancient Israel, is during the time of David Melech and Shlomo. But before we get there, let's take a look at Saul after he's anointed and he's sent homeward on his journey. The prophet Shmuel says to him, Thou shalt meet a company of inspired Nevi'im coming down from the high place, with a neville, harp, and a tuff, a tambourine, and a halil, a pipe, and a kinor, a sithra, and they shall be inspired, and the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt be inspired, the hit nabebita, and shall be turned into another, you shall be turned into another person. Um, so, we can read the whole incident. Achar kain tavo givat ha'elokim asher sham nitzvei pilish so 
ירדאים מחה באמה ולפניהם נבל וטוף וחליל וכינור והמה מתנבאים. זלחה עליך רוח השם והתנביתה עימם ונחפכתה לאיש אחר. You shall become another man when you go into ecstasy and prophecy with these uh, prophets. And Saul's servant said to him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God terrified thee. So this um, raises the question uh, where a skillful player and the harp was called, David Melech. It says, Vayomer na Adonenu, Avdecha lefanecha yivachshu ish yodea menagen bekinor, bakinor. Vaya bechiyot alecha ruach alokim ra'a venagen biado vetovlach. So David's going to cure him of his melancholy by playing the pipe, the harp. Vayomru Shaul el avadav, Rauna li ish metiv lenagen vaviotan alai. So he says, provide me with the man who can play well and bring him to me to cure me of my melancholy. So it's a therapeutic thing. We find it again in verse 23. Notice it's a pre- repeat, repeated three times. So so again, David cures him a second time and a third time. Now in 1 Samuel 18.10, it came to pass on the marvel that an evil spirit again visited Saul. It says, Vayihi b'machrat v'titzlach ruach elokim ra el Shaul v'yitnabay betoch habayit ledavid minagain biyado ki yom biyom v'hachanit biyad Shaul. Again, he cured him by playing the harp. And then it happens again in 1 Samuel 19, 9. Um, so David's continually curing him of the, uh, of the, um, of the melancholy. Now, the, when victory over Goliath uh, David returns from that accomplishment. Um, the women sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David is tens of thousands. And they came with timbrels, with joy, and with three stringed instruments. Likra'at Shaul ha-melech betupim besimcha u And also with three stringed triangles. Um, and then they said this verse that actually made Saul jealous. The Tanehana. Hanashim hamisakot the Tomra Nana Hika Shaul ba Alafav the David be Rivotav. So Saul has killed his thousands, David his tens of thousands. So that David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of horn. So when David brought the ark of the covenant uh, from Hebron where he reigned for seven years to Yerushalayim where he reigned for thirty three years. Again, it was done with the sound of an instrument, the horn. But David bekol Beit Israel ma'alim et Aaron Hashem betrua uvekol shofar. Remember, Michal saw David Amalek dancing very um, in a compromised manner in a loincloth, and she said how the king has debased his royal dignity, and he said that he was dancing with all his might and all his strength before Hashem. And Michal was plagued with being barren for criticizing him um, when he was doing this as a Kiddush Hashem. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord with all manner of instruments made of cypress wood and with harps and with psalteries and with timbrels and with sistra and with cymbals. The David v'kol beit Yisrael mischakim lifnei Hashem v'chol atzei b'roshim u'v'kinorot u'v'nevalim u'v'tupim u'v'menanim so um, it was brought up the ark with great musical accompaniment. Now, uh, David appoints Abiathar, the high priest, and later Zadok, and Asaph as the high head of the Levitical singers and instrumentalists and his deputy maestro Zechariah. So when David brings the ark of the covenant to uh, Yerushalayim and he bought um, uh, the threshing floor there for the Beit HaMikdash, 
um, he set up a Levitical uh, musical guild, so to speak. Asaf, the chief, and second to him, Zechariah, Yehiel, and Shemiramot, and Yehiel, and Matitia, and Eliab, and Benaiah, and Obed Odom, and Yehiel, with psalteries and with harps, and Asaf, with cymbals, sounding aloud, and Benaiah, and Jehaaziel, the priests, with trumpets, continually before the Ark of the Covenant of God. When we will see later on in time, um, David's about 1000 BCE when he made Jerusalem the capital, but in the time of Hezkiahu in the 700s, um, they all try to replicate and, and return to the golden age of the musical Levitical singers in the time of David and Shlomo, because that was the high point of Jewish history for the music. And so Hezkiahu will try to um, employ um, the same number and uh, types of uh, musical instruments uh, for his uh, Beta Mikdash as well. So uh, Asaf played the cymbals, the mitzel Taim, and his sons accompanied him. His sons are Zakor, Yosef, Nathanael, Azarallah, and Eitan, son of Kushia. Uh, and then there's Yedutan, played the Kinor, the Sitra, or Kinorot, with his sons Gedalia, Zeri, Yeshaya, Heshabia, and Matathia, and Hemon, who was actually a seer in David's court, he is also a musician. He played the harp, the Nivalin, with um, other people, his sons, Bukikia, Matananaya, Uziziel, Shabuel, Yerimut, Hanania, Hananani, Eliata, Gidalti, Romanti Ezer, and Josh Bekasha, and Malotai, and Hotir, and Mahaziot. You know, they say names are very important, so I'm mentioning all the names of the uh, top of the Levitical um, instrumentalists in the Beit HaMikdash of David. Uh, David wanted to build it, and of course he didn't see it built. His son would be uh, doing that. And then there were gatekeepers in verse 18, we note. Um, then we note the phrase, they some played the Alamot, um, that's Zechariah, Aziel, Shemiramot, Yehiel, Uni, Eliab, Maasiah, and Benaiah. Um, so it's thought that an alamot was made with a certain type of red sandalwood, a musical instrument, maybe cypress. The accompanists on the Kinor were Matiah, Elifela, Mikaniah, Obededom, Yehiel, Azaziah, and the eight, they played the eight string Sithras. Hananiah, the chief of the Levites, was the conductor or the uh, maestro who was skillful in the art. And the priests Shabaniah and Yehoshaphat, and Nathaniel and Amasai, and Zechariah and Benaiah, and Eliezer blew the trumpets, the Chatzorot, before the Ark of God, while the priests Benaiah and Yehaziel blew the trumpets before the Ark of the Covenant. So all of this is very important, folks, um, to remember the names of uh, the Levitical instrumentalists and singers in David's court. The musical consecrations uh, followed by Psalm 16:79, will recall: "Biyomahu az Natan David berosh lehodot laHashem biyad asaf veachiv." And then on the day David first ordained to give thanks unto the Lord by the hand of Asaf and his brethren. Hodu Hashem karu bishmo hodia ba'amim eliotav. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His doings amongst the prophets, peoples. Shirlo, Zamrulo, Sichu Bechol Niflotav. Sing unto him, sing praises unto him, speak of his marvelous works. And then Hitalalu Bishem Kod Sho Yismach Nev Mi Vakshay Hashem. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek Hashem. Dershu Hashem Buzo Bakshu Panav Tamid. Seek his face always. Um, that opens Rambam's uh, Sefer Mara Nebuchim, that the purpose and mission of life is to get closer to Hashem. Now, we're going to move into the Book of Kings in 432. The Songs of Solomon were said to be 1,005. Then in Chronicles 512 and echoed in Kings 1012, we find that Almug wood was juniper, and it was imported by Shlomo. 
for making sitharas, or kinarot, harps, and nivalim, for the singers. So Solomon imported this, uh, this juniper wood for musical instruments. The dedication of the temple was again Asaf, Himan, and Juduthun, who played, Juduthun played the cymbals, the metzil taim, the harps, the nevalim, and the sitharas, the kinarot, stood at the east of the altar. And it says, 120 priests surrounded the Levitical trumpets, the chatzotzerot. In 2 Kings 9.13, it mentions that when Jehu was proclaimed king, he blew the shofar as a coronation. In 2 Kings 11.14, at the coronation of Yoash, the queen Athalia looked and beheld princes and trumpeters, chatzotzerot, and instruments of music, the clay Hashir. In Torah Chronicles 13, it mentions celebrate military victory of Jehoshaphat, who attacked the Moabites and the Ammonites, and he returned to Jerusalem, and he was accompanied and met with harps, nevalim, and sitharas, kinarot, and trumpets, chatzotzerot. That's in 2 Chronicles 20. Amos, the prophet, says the phrase, haporotim al pi hanavel, to bring out strum, or to bring out strum, single notes according to the Neville. Amos in 8.3, however, says, And the songs of the palace shall be wailings in that day. So he also gives Musar, that you think you're happy in playing music. It's not going to be so happy, and I'm going to make you, um, you know, have wailings instead of music. Because um, he's offering Musar. Uh, Hezkiah, around 7.20 to 6.90, set the Levitical priesthood in the house of the Lord. Um, he set up, Mitzaltaim, Nevalim, Kinarot, according to the commandment of David, and of God the King Seer, and Nathan the Navi. So they're all looking back to David's reign when music was very important. Remember, David came from a musical family. He played the harp for Shaul, and he would learn the harp while he was shepherding his sheep before he became uh, involved in politics. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David, the clay David, and the priests with the chatzots are wrote, the trumpets. When the burnt offerings began, the song of the Hashem, Shir Adonai, began also with the chatzots are wrote, the trumpets, and all the instruments ordained by David, and the singers sang, and the instruments sounded. They praised Hashem with gladness. 2 Chronicles 29. Israelite tribes turned away from Hashem, invited to Jerusalem to hear the Levites praise Hashem. So Hezekiah offered song of thanksgiving after being healed in Isaiah 38. That's brought down. So let's recall the phrase that we find in verse 20 of Isaiah. The Lord is ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Hashem. So Hezekiah, when he davened for another seven years of life, um, he, uh, when he was granted health, he uh, thanked God by playing instruments. Hashem. Hoshi an eni venigenotai ninagain kol yeme chayenu al beit Hashem. So after Hezkiahu, there was the good king Josiah. There was a bad king in between them, Manasseh. And, um, but anyway, Josiah reappointed the family of the Levites, Jahath and Obadiah and Zechariah and Meshulam, who were versed in playing instruments. And the priest Hilkiah found a safer outbreak in the temple inventory. That's one of the Haftorot. And he reinstituted music on the Pesach. So, um, the, I should also mention Josiah was slain by the Egyptian Necho. Um, and Jeremiah lamented his death of Josiah. Quote, And all the singing men and singing women spoke of Josiah in their lamentations of his death. So, it also the music instruments can express not only the extreme of joy and happiness, but also grief and um, lament and a dirge and lament. Um, now, we have in verse 15, the singers and the sons of Asaph were in their place according to the commandment of David and Asaph and Iman and Judithon and the king Seir and the porters were at every gate. They needed not to depart from the service for their brethren, the Levites prepared for them. It goes on, 16, so all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of the Lord, according to the commandment of Josiah. So Josiah on Pesach commanded that the offerings be accompanied. In Isaiah 12, we find the importance of music as Hodu, Zamuru, and Zahali, and Ronani. 
Let us read. Vamartem biyom ahu, hodu lanu shem karu bishmo, hodio bamim aleotav za hazkiru ki niskav shemo. Zamnu la shem ki gaut asa muda'at zot b'cho ha'aretz. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done gloriously. This is made known in all the earth. So uh, the musical instruments um, are used to express high spiritual longing. Uh, the verses continue, Zali Veroni, the Yoshebet Ki Gado Zion, Ki Gado Bekrabecha Karbech Kadosh Yisrael. Cry aloud and shout, Thou inhabits of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee, accompanied by song. So in Isaiah 30, we find again the Halil, the Tupim, the Satharas, the Kinarot, and the phrase Shir Ladonai Shir Chadash. That's in 4210. Um, so, um, again, it's important in expressing the importance of song uh, for expressing high levels of spirituality and accompanying the korbanot and also going out to battle and assembling people, and uh, they have different functions. Pro- musical instruments also are used for prophecy um, and prophetic poetic prophecies to boot. Jeremiah in 40 through 48 says, Therefore, mine heart shall sound the for Moab like pipes, ka chalalim, and mine heart shall sound like pipes, ka chalalim, for the men of Kirharis. Isaiah 26, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah with a song. Habakkuk 319, to the accompaniment of my stringed instruments, la menatzeach bi neginotai, to sing to my string playing. So even the Navi Habakkuk, of which the Dead Sea Scrolls wrote a Habakkuk commentary, um, he would even prophesize with stringed instruments. Now, let's go on to the flip side um, of the lamentations and music that can express bitterness and sadness. Um, in Isaiah 28, 24, rather, we find the bitterness of song and wine. He's giving Musar. They drink not wine with a song. Strong drink is better than, than that drink it. So, Bashir lo yishtu yayin, they will not drink wine with song. Yemar shachar l'shotav. Um, so, in Eo, we find a similar thought that um, my sethera kinor is turned into a song of lamentation, and my shwam ugav to notes of mourning. Now let's read that. Zikinim mi sha'ar shabatu. Bachorim beniganotam Shabbat mesus lebenu nechapach laavel mecholalenu. So that's from Echad five. The elders have ceased from the gate. The men from their music. The joy of the heart has ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. So uh, music in in the dirge form in a minor key can be used to f- express the the depths of sorrow. Jeremiah on hope, however. Remember, Jeremiah knows that Nebuchadnezzar is going to come in in 586 and destroy everything, the Chorban of the Beit Rishon, but he actually buys some uh, real estate in Eretz Israel before he'll be exiled. Tradition has it he went to Cairo Fostat and he had visited the site that become Maimonides Shul, the Ibn Ezra Shul. But whatever it is, um, he notes, Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin Israel, Again shalt thou be adorned with tabrets, and shalt go forth in dances of them that make merry in song. Again shalt thou plant vineyards upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall have the use thereof. So his hope is that song will again return to Eretz Israel. Ode Evnech Venivnet Bitulat Israel. Ode Tadi Tipach. Yitzat bi machol Um Now, the Babylonian exile, um, we have, of course, the very famous um, song where David and Melech uh, prophesied on the rivers of Babylon. Al Narot Babel Sham Yashabnu Gambachinu Vizakaronu Etzion Al Aravim Bitocha Talinu Kinrotenu Ki Sham Shalunu Shuvenu Ivrei Shir, Vitolaleinu Simcha, Shir Lanu Mishir Tzion, Echna Shir Et Shir Hashem Al Adamat Nachar, 
אם יש לך כירושלים תשכח ימיני, תדבק לשוני להיקי, אם לא אזכרתי, אם לא אעלה את ירושלים על ראש שמחתי. So this psalm which David prophesies in about 1000 uh, to the Babylonian exile in 586 by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat, there we wept um, when we remembered Zion. Upon the willows in the midst thereof we hung up our harps, for there they had led us captive, asked us words of song, and our tormentors asked of us mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing Hashem's song in a foreign land? If I forget thee, O Yerushalayim, let my right hand forget her cunning. Let my tongue cleave to the root of my mouth. And if I remember thee not, if I set not Yerushalayim above my chiefest joy. So I write about this psalm in this book, Music and Medicine. And I note that according to Pasikta Rabbatai 31, uh, one of the Levitical families cut their thumbs off so that they should not have to teach the Babylonians instrumental music. On the rivers of Babylon, there we sat there and wept when we remembered Zion. For the Levites refused to sing a new song of an old land in a land of captivity in deference to the music of the Beit HaMikdash remembered in sorrow, in the exile. Rashi comments that the to tolal is a musical instrument with regards to the verses. Al Arabim Bitocha Talinu Kinrotenu. Um, and then that's upon the willows in the midst thereof we hang our harps. For they led us captive, asked of us words of song. Ki sham shalunu shovenu divrei shir tolalinu simcha. Shir lanu mishir tzion. Radak holds that this music instrument, the tolal, is a harp. Kinor, rooted in the word for hanging, because the Levites hung the instrument on the willow, a tree representing grief and mourning. Radak also relates tolal to weeping. Our cruel captors demanded that instead of weeping, we should display joy. The Sikta Rabbatai 28 notes that when the Levites refused to sing songs before the idols of Babylon, their cruel captors were angry and slew multitudes and piled up talim in mounds. Thus the reading, despite our mounds of murdered victim bodies, quote, we rejoiced over our decision to resist against singing to their idols. The Malbian explains the cruelty of the Babylonians demanded that while the Jews used to sing wonderful songs about Zion, and the temple music, now it is demanded that the Jews forget Zion and accept Babylon as a homeland and sing to Babylon. The same praises once sang to Zion, claiming it the most wonderful place. Quote, the consummation of all beauty, Psalm 50, 20. When the Levite instrumentalists were demanded to serenade Nebuchadnezzar, the Levite instrumentalists immediately, without hesitation, cut off their thumbs, naming their ability to play stringed instruments. They thus did not refuse to play. They subversively were able to reply, how can we sing the song of Hashem? We cannot make any more sublime music with our crippled hands. So I want to note in rabbinic thought in the time of the Rishonim, the Middle Ages, um, even at a wedding, only drum music was allowed, according to some responsa, uh, because the idea of playing a stringed instrument or even a percussion instrument uh, was thought that oh, that should only be reserved for when the temple is rebuilt. And that if we were to go into such simcha at a wedding, that would really um, make us forget. And the whole breaking of the glass at the wedding, even though glass was very expensive in the Roman period, was not just to put on damper things because something expensive was broken, but to remember the, the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash. So um, the Babylonian exile is a sad time for song. And yet in Daniel 3, um, we find that at what time of year the sound of the horn, pipe, harp, dragon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all sorts of music, when you fall down and worship, the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So uh, Daniel is noting that Nebuchadnezzar went as worship idols and that it wasn't appropriate to play all these instruments, the horn, the pipe, the harp, the trigon, the psaltery, and all kinds of music for, before an idol. Um, uh, it goes on in verse 10, Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of horn, pipe, harp, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, the samponya, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship a golden image. Obviously, that's Abedah Zarah. Daniel refused to do that. Um, Ezra 2, we have an account that 50,000 Jews are returning with Ezra from Babel, and among the 50,000, 200 are singing men of the Levites. Um, Misharim, um, that's the name for the singers. And besides their men servants and their maid servants, of whom there were 7,000, 337, 
and they had 200 singing men and singing women. So Ezra notes uh, the, fa the, the incident where people wept for joy. You had people weeping who remembered the first Beit HaMikdash, and you had the, um, the people singing for joy who saw Ezra and Nehemiah, with the help of Cyrus, rebuild it. Let's read. Ve'sudu ha'bonim et hechal Hashem, v'yamidu ha'konim miluvashim bechatzorot, v'alevim b'nei asaf b'matzolotayim, l'halel et Hashem al yedei David, melech Yisrael. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with symbols to praise the Lord according to the direction of David, king of Israel. So what we're seeing here is um, different uh, aspects and roles of the, of the instruments in the Beit HaMikdash. Uh, we've looked at how prophecy and music were um, related in the time particularly of Shaul, David, and Shlomo. We've seen the therapeutic use of music with David healing Shaul from his melancholy. And um, there are scholars like Moshe Yidel who wrote quite a bit on Rabbi Abraham Abelafia who argues that Rabbi Abraham Abelafia would use music to go into a meditative state which he thought was necessary to reach the ecstasy of Nebuah. Um, now, much can be said and we don't have much time but I'll be brief about it. Musical metaphors in the Bible and Eov, when God created the universe, all the morning stars, the Pleiades, sang for joy. What a beautiful metaphor. The idea of the seven sister stars singing, um, is that that's the highest form of praise of God's act of creation. Now, we could have a whole different lecture on the Jewish liturgical music of the synagogue. Uh, maybe we'll have to do that later. And we would definitely need to note something about the cantillation in Trup um, that was uh, at least set down in writing by the Asher Ben Asher family in Tiberia around the 6th and 7th century. They put in, not only really counted words and they put in vowels, but they put in musical cantillation. And there's a work called Tame Atamim, the reason for the Trup. And Asher Ben Asher writes that when you sing the notes correctly, it's like a maftiach, a key, that opens the gates in heaven where the soul will be refreshed and delighted by angelic beings giving over secrets and wisdom. Um, and he notes another beautiful metaphor, that the words, the, the black ink on the parchment is like the body, and when the music is the soul, the ruach, and when a good Baal Kore sings and lanes the chanting of the Torah according to proper cantillation and trump. It's like resurrection, that the soul, the ruach, the music, will resurrect the block body, the black ink on the parchment. Isn't that a beautiful metaphor? Um, now the science of cantillation and trump, uh, we can talk about at greater length and perhaps a different lecture. The piyotim are sublime musical poems written by the rabbis. Also in the Yamim Noreim, you can hear beautiful cantorial, um, uh, singing of those piyotim, while Echa, on the other hand, is in a minor key. Echa, you know, Jeremiah's lament over the destruction of the first temple um, is a dirge, and dirges are sad. So you have music phenomena on the one hand that um, you can reach the high point of uh, ecstasy and joy and happiness, and on the other hand, something like Echa, which is very sad and has a unique trope. It's in a minor key. It sounds a little bit like this. And all of us are Avle Zion, mourners for Zion, until the Beit HaMikdash is rebuilt, and we hope to see it rebuilt by Hashem uh, soon in our day. We are really should be conscious of not being able to de enjoy delicious fruits. They don't have the geschmack they do that they would have if the Beit HaMikdash were standing according to a Mishnah. So in a minor key, it's very important to keep in mind Echa, uh, because it expresses the great sadness of what was lost in the Beit HaMikdash. It sounds a little bit like this. Echa yashba badad ha'ir rabati aham ha'yita ke'aumana 
Rabati Vagoyim Sarati Bamidinohot Hayata Lamas. <clears throat> How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes, princess among the provinces, how she has become a tributary. Bachu tivke balayla dimata ahalechya ein la menachem mikoyeveha korah bagduvaha hayula Loyavim. She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. She hath none to comfort her among her lovers. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Galta Yehuda Meoni, Umerov Avodah. He Lo Manuach Kod Rofeha. He ben hamitzrim. So Judah has gone into exile because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the nation. She find no wrath. All her pursuers overtake her within the straits. We read, Darchei Tzion Abelot Mivlihim Ba'e Moehed Kol shareha shomemin koaneha nenachim bitolotaha nugod vehi marla. So the ways of Zion do mourn because none come to solemn assembly. All her gates are desolate. Reminds me of COVID. Her priests sigh, hoping it'll be over soon. We'll find a vaccine. Her virgins are afflicted. She herself is in bitterness. Um, so the, the text goes on and on. It's in a minor key. It's a sad lament. So we see that music can express the heights of happiness and the depths of sorrow. Um, now the Azarot tradition, the poems of the Taryaga Mitzvot, they were also sung with um, music. Um, we should not forget that rabbinic notes on music, that the harpang above David Zabed made magical music at midnight. So that's a Masecha Brachot. I've read that in other YouTube videos, and it's a very beautiful passage that David Malach would play the harp to the sparkling of the dawn. This ceremony of Takun Chatzot, Takun Laila, Takun Rachel, and Takun Leah comes from this sugya in the Mesecha Brachot that this harp made magical music above David Malach's bed, uh, which caused him to wake at midnight, and then he played the harp to the sparkling of the dawn. There are debates between Rambam and Ramban in Sefer HaMitzvot if liturgical recitation of Hallel on Hagim is Doraita de Rabbanan, that's a question of Halacha. It is the Tashbaz, Rabbi Shimon Zemach Duran in Zohar Rekia, who reconciles the two positions. So, um, the, the whole question of the Shofar blast, why we have a hundred blasts of the Shofar on uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, so is dealt with in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, and that's a whole mystery revealed into itself. We can have a whole separate lecture on the shofar blasts. Um, Chazanim in Eastern Europe uh, uh, developed uh, great musical traditions. You have examples of Yosel Rosenblatt, who traced his lineage back to uh, Rabbi Ostropoler in Eastern Europe, and Mekubal, and you have Moshe Osher, and Kavitsky, and Stark, Ben Zion Miller, Albrecht, Fidudu Fischer, Jakob Motzen and today Cantor Helfgott. Um, these are all cantorial traditions. We can have a whole sheer just on cantorial music. So um, I could say much more about halacha and music. In the Suridei Eish, a response about having a classical music concert in a synagogue in Germany in the 1930s when the anti Semitic laws were in force, uh, the Suridei Eish weighs in on that, Rabbi Weinberg. Also, in a response, Krok Shal Romi about a rabbi secretly listening into Catholic churches in Rome uh, to learn their tunes to sing over in cantorial music. Um, the Rambam wrote a whole response in the Rishonim period on listening to music. He differentiates between good music and bad music. 
good music is what is therapeutic, while bad music is like, you know, prone to violence and preaches us and is lewd. Um, and uh, after he just differentiates, uh, he sees a very important place for music uh, in as serving as a as a kind of physician of the soul. Rabbi Shem Tov ben Yosef ibn Falkara wrote a work, Seeking in Music. Um, Rabbi Aaron Khan, in, today, in YU, uh, wrote many articles, I think in tradition, about halacha and music. Um, have you ever wondered why there's no instrumental music on Shabbat? The reasons um, are given by uh, Rabbi Khan. Um, now, in Renaissance Italy, we can have a whole separate lecture, one of my um, cachet interests is in uh, Solomon de Rossi, who was given permission, a heter by Rabbi Leon Mundana, to set Telem and much of the liturgy to choral music with singing. And, and at that time in Baroque Italy, uh, they had uh, the treble clef to represent music. Uh, you had Chazanaim in Italy, you had the Baroque music. Um, Dove in the Cleft of Iraq is a very important group that uh, performs Baroque music today. Rabbi Yehuda ben Yosef Moscato, who lived 1520 to 1590. Rabbi Abram ben David Portoleon and Sefer Shilte Hagiburim writes on music. You know, Rabbi Elijah de Maldigo was a great musicologist as well as being a physician and philosopher. Um, the tradition of music today is very diverse. Uh, we have Yiddish folk songs. We have the Yemenite Diwan. We have Israeli folk songs of the early Zionist project. We have Hasidic Nigunin, my... Uh, friend Rabbi Chaim Dalfin is an expert in Hasidic Nigunin. You have the whole tradition of klezmer uh, in instrumental music in Eastern Europe. Um, just dance itself has a whole tradition. The Rikud, Israeli folk dance dancing, the Hasidic mitzvah tans, and the mezikah tans, the rabbinic halacha towards dance, and the bat konim, the merrymakers at weddings, all played very important functions. We can have a whole different sheer on classical musicians and the Jewish origins of Jewish music's influence on certain uh, composers. Um, for instance, Goldmark and Offenbach, uh, Offenbach were the sons of Chazanim, um, Berthold Goldschmidt, Ernst Bloch's musical themes, the atonal scale of Schoenberg, a lot can be said about that. He did an opera called Moses and Aaron, um, and Aaron is given these wonderful arias, very fluid, and Moses speaks in Sprechstimme, that is to say, staccato, because of the midrash that he reached for the coal rather than the gold, and he touched his lips and he's a stutterer. We have Korngold, we have Aaron Copeland, Kurt Weil, Leonard Bernstein, you know, he did a lot of music inspired by the Psalms, Andre Previn, Rubinstein, Heifetz, Philip Glass, all of these are Jewish musicians who had cantorial uh, background in their history. Um, we have a diversity of Jewish music today. The Jews of India, the Jews of Morocco, the Jews of Ethiopia, the Chinese Jews, uh, the music of Jews in Arab lands, Ladino music. Uh, Yoram Gaon is a great performer of Ladino music, Yiddish music, Sephardic Pizamin. All of these types of music are a great diversity and wonderful to listen to how they pick up certain um, traditions and, and characteristics of the music in their surrounding host cultures that influence the Indian, Moroccan, Ethiopian, and Chinese music. Um, now, of course, Jewish popular music today is very big. Um, you have reggae uh, and of like Matish Yahu. I've even heard a bluegrass rendition of Lachad Dodi. I think it was by Rabbi Menachem Goldberger. You have schlock rock. You have all sorts of aspects um, of music today. You have poetry set to music of Rachel and Bialik and God Elbaz, certainly in a troubadour tradition of singing ballads. So um, there's a lot that can be said about music. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's lecture. Um, perhaps we'll have a separate lecture just on the topic of songs in the Bible. Um, as you know, there are 10 biblical songs. The song of Adam Rishon, Psalm 92, Shir Hayam, Az Yashir Moshe in Exodus 15, Az Yashir Yisrael in Bab Midbar 21, Hazinu in Devarim 32, you have Yeshua in 10, you have Devorah in Shof Team 5. You have Chana in Shmuel Aleph um, and in Chapter 2. You have David HaMelech in Shmuel 22nd. And you have Shira Shirim, Shal Shlomo. 
And you have Yeshayahu in chapter 26 is in poetic verse as well as a song. I hope you've enjoyed the lecture tonight. Um, we've tried to show that um, three main things, not only the names of musical instruments and where they occur systematically in the 24 sections of the Tanakh, but we've also tried to show that the music can be an aspect and plays a role, and certainly during the time of Shoal and David, of going into an ecstatic trance of state that made one conducive to prophecy, Nebuah, we find music as a therapeutic aspect, number two, in David curing Shaul of a ruach ra, of melancholy. And we find uh, music very important just to express the high points of joy in Simcha, which is the offering of the korbanot, the highest form of Simcha we can know. And then also it can express the greatest depths of sorrow and lament and dirge when we don't have the Beit HaMikdash. And that's why Yerimahu's Echa is in a minor key. I thank everybody for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed this lecture on musical instruments and music in the Tanakh. Thank you.